Thank you, Ron. My guest served for over 20 years as the executive director for Eurovangelism Canada, a mission working in Eastern Europe for the last 45 years. He traveled into many of the former communist countries and over the years has brought some wonderful guests to this program. Well, it shouldn't be surprising that John Murray has great stories to tell. Remarkable true stories of God's intervention. If we only knew. John, welcome from Acton, Ontario. Thank you. As soon as you speak, we're going to know you weren't born in Acton, Ontario. Indeed, you're right. Indeed. Essex, England? Essex, England, yes. Yes, yes. and of course, Bristol, England is where the mission was that, founded. That's right. That that's you've the represented. Head, that's the headquarters of the mission. You retired yes. in 06? Yes, yes. And here's the fruit of that's some right. time. That's exactly right. Exactly, yes. And some yes. wonderful stories. Some yes. wonderful stories that we don't get to hear because uh, uh, most of these come from what were Eastern Bloc countries. Yes, they were. My personal experiences and um, other stories that people have told me um, while I've been visiting there, um, telling me something of what happened during the communist days. This just begs the rest of the sentence. If we only knew what? Well, <laughs> It sounds rather generic, but the fact of the matter is you can finish that sentence um, with almost anything except that uh, my concept was if we only knew what God was up to, what God was doing, how much God intervenes in our lives, how much God cares for us, how much God loves us. And I think with the stories that I've out, um, laid out here, it really just shows that God is at work, but we need to see him at work. Now we've just had such a devastating story yes. of loss in a family that loves and serves God. And the reality that you point out is God is alive, but it's easy mm. to lose sight of him yes, it in is. the midst of evil, yes, of, it of is. loss, of yes. trials. Yes, I think that we need to be trained almost to determine uh, that God is at work and we need to be looking at our lives. We need to be looking. The, the thing is, with, with God's action within our lives, so often we see it in retrospect, mm -hmm. right? It's, he was it's like, there all the time, yes, or he was it, at work it's in like, a big picture. Yes, it's like the footprints, you know? Mm -hmm. You see God at work later. But um, there are times when it would be good to see God right now, in the present. Mm -hmm. And I believe that we can when we become sensitive to what he is doing and how much he cares. Well, you've got some great saints. Well, actually, they're not all believers that you write about in here. No. Uh, but no. people who have seen God at work in amazing ways. One of my favorites, could I pick? Yes, indeed. Uh, Constantine? Yes. Constantine, yes. T t he doesn't have an E on the end. No, he doesn't, say that's right. Constantine, Constantine. Uh, from yeah. Romania. Yes. Tell us yeah. about this uh, remarkable man of faith. Well, Constantine was, in fact, he was a very keen Christian, wanted to help his pastor, and those, that was in the days when it was very difficult to um, have even, uh, let's say, possession of Bibles. But he wanted to help his pastor in the distribution of Bibles in their city. He hadn't got a car himself, and so he would borrow the pastor's car and make deliveries uh, on behalf of the pastor. And of course, uh, it so happened that he was stopped by the police and they searched his car and it wasn't difficult for them to find Bibles. And immediately um, they told him, out of the car. Um, and they were going to uh, search him, etc. And as he opened the door, the door hit the hand of one of the policemen and it scratched the man's hand. He was sentenced or he was charged with... Uh, attempted murder. Attempted murder. For a yes. scratch on the back of the for hand. For a scratch on the back of the hand. It was so false. But in fact, he was sentenced for that to seven and a half years in prison. But the West, the Christians in the West heard about this. And there was an incredible postal campaign, um, both to the embassies in Washington and London. And thousands of Christians sent notes, sent letters, sent postcards um, on behalf of Constantine. And it so happened that he had served one year, and because of the pressure, uh, they released him. Yeah. 
but in fact... Uh, they wanted they, him right out of yeah, the country. That's they exactly so right. That's exactly right. They wanted him out of the country, so they deported him with his family. And my wife and I, Rita and I, had the pleasure of having him stay with us in our home. And when he told us his story, it was... It was not, he wasn't concentrating on the, uh, either the interrogation or the torture, but he was concentrating on God's intervention in his life and what he had discovered. One of the greatest things he says is that he learned each day that when he had to stand facing the wall for two hours in the morning. That's and when two they did hours, roll call, they, right? They did roll call, yes, every day. And he had to stand facing the wall, a few inches from the wall, each day for those two hours, and he said he found eventually that that became the time of his communion and his meditation with the Father. Hmm. And, and his, it was... His prayer closet. Yes, indeed, <laughs> indeed. Facing the wall. Right in the midst of, the, as I say, torture, right in the midst of just awful conditions. And he, in fact, went into that prison with stomach problems, stomach ailments, and yet the food was, well, it was maggot-infested, cabbage and all the rest of it, but um, he was healed. He said he was totally unaffected. He, he didn't have any tummy trouble in prison. No, no. And none following. No, no. So that wretched food yeah. and meager, horrible. Yes, yes, indeed, yeah. It's but, but the incredible thing is, I mean, he suffered. He suffered in there, a terrible torture. Well, you I mean, say he in did, the book that there's, there are things he couldn't even tell his wife. That's right. That I mean, he did, he did tell us he was beaten with the leg of a table. Um, but there were things that he just would not share. He could not share. But um, he continued to look to God yes, he did. in that horrible place. Yes. And experienced God's yeah. blessing That's in the right. darkness. 